Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hello, I'm Ralph, behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. Thank you. So, um, we are going to fix a cake uh, to take to a party we're going to later on. What's special about this cake? Well, you know what? I was going through some of my vintage recipes. Um, and I found one from the early 1950s, 1952, I think, from what I can date. And it's called a color cake. And basically, um, it's a cake that has different, uh, can have whatever color you want because it starts with a cake mix, but then the color and flavor is provided by Jello. So different jellos or one jello? You can use whatever jello you want. You could use cherry, strawberry, raspberry. We're going to use orange. You could use lime. But I, I mean, mean, the sky's the limit. Could you mix up different jellos and have like layers of colors? Oh, I guess you probably could. Yes, That'd be like Ralph. a Superman ice cream. Yeah, you could. You could do a multi-layer rainbow of colors if you wanted to. We decided we're going to do orange um, because one, I had orange jello in the pantry. And two, we have some pineapple left over from a ham. A ham. <laughs> and so, so no ham or cake. Orange and pineapple are a yes. great combination. So an orange pineapple cake. Yeah. But it's from a recipe that's called a color cake. And and we are we're starting with a mix. Um, this is a white cake mix. A lot of companies have downsized the cake mix. They used to be like 18 and a half ounces, wow, but they made it smaller. That? Some are as small as 15 and a quarter ounce. This one is 16 and a half ounce. So, what a rip. Um, it's just, you know, it's the way of the world. They, they, instead of raising the price or whatever, they're just making things it's smaller. Give you less for the same amount. So, um, but this, this, this recipe came from the early days of cake mixes, um, Betty Crocker actually, uh, this recipe because, you know Ralph, cake mixes really were introduced to the public like after World War II. And they were quite the innovation, right? They, they were, but there was a lot of resistance to cake mixes. They were marketing it mostly to the, you know, housewife, but um, a lot of people who were bakers felt that making a cake from a mix wouldn't seem homemade. Mm. Um, and so they really had to sell cake mixes as as good as homemade, and that if you made it, if you used a box mix, the cake was still homemade. You made it, okay, not from scratch per se, but you made it yourself. And you made right? it in your home. Exactly. So, um, all right, I've got uh, the contents of a cake mix, white cake mix here. To that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda and I'm going to add one whoop teaspoon. one lid <laughs> one plastic for fiber <laughs> one um, a teaspoon of baking powder okay. okay then I've got three egg whites here now when you are making a white cake mix they often will just call for the whites not the whole egg some three people egg use three egg, egg whites one cup of water and a looks like I've got a quarter of a cup here uh, of vegetable oil. Oil, okay. Okay. Now so far pretty traditional, I guess. Yeah. Just I'm doing what the box says. The only thing that I'm adding is I always add a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of baking soda whenever I use a cake mix. Is that your mom's trick? Yeah, because you know she always thought you never knew how how Fresh. old the mix was or when it was made. So what have you just opened? I opened our orange gelatin, and I'm going to put three tablespoons of orange gelatin mix in our cake batter here one so is two this, this is a dumb question but is orange is this gelatin the same as jello jello or? yep mm -hmm. yeah jello is the brand name, name okay. but okay but it's orange gelatin okay so three tablespoons of uh whatever your jello, favorite jello flavor you like look how orange it is okay all right we are gonna get stirring here I've got, we're going to make a layer cake. You could do this as a 13 by 9. 
uh, sheet cake if you wanted to. But because we're going to a party and we're a little fancier, mm -hmm. we're going to make a layer cake out of this. Did you already add the pineapple? No, the pineapple is going to go in the, on the frosting. With the frosting. It's nice. I smell pineapple. Well, you smell actually the, the, the orange. orange. Oh, the orange. Yeah. So, let me get a spatula here and scrape down a little bit. Um, so, yeah, we'll work the pineapple into the equation when it comes time for the frosting. Okay. There we are. Now, I got two eight inch pans here, which I am going to put, um, this is this is a baking uh, spray. So more than just putting a, a oil, it also has flour in it. See that? Wow. So if you didn't have this, grease and flour your baking pan. This kind of does it for you in wow. one step. And kills the ozone at the same time. <laughs> Just kidding. So, okay. It's, uh, here. That's, there's a lot of different ones on, out there, but that's the one that I usually use. Well, what do they think of next? So you, it's another step saver. Yep. Okay, so here's our cake. So, it's we're going to split the orangey. bag. Very orangey. Again, you could use any flavor you wanted to. It's going to take on the color, obviously, of the... The jello whichever one that you have and the flavor and the flavor because white cake mix doesn't really on its own have a strong you know it's just sweet but it doesn't have a particular flavor like a yellow mix kind of has this buttery flavor to it and so I use the white because it's sort of neutral Kevin was a little disappointed that he didn't have pineapple jello on hand so Marianne and I suggested he mix orange and pineapple to come up with this, right? Yes, because I would have made this all pineapple as my favorite flavor. But what if you were, if you did have pineapple gelatin, Jello. you mm -hmm. could have done one orange and one pineapple layer, couldn't you? You could. You would have had to split your white batter. So what you would have done is Just make your white it. batter first, then half of it, then add your jello in two separate bowls. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, okay. So we have our two our two layers here. I've got the oven preheated to 350 degrees. This is going to bake for about 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, at 350. So far, you're making it look very easy. That's all there is. I'll get cleaned up, uh, and then we'll come back. Off. Uh, been like oh, about 36 minutes. Here's our cakes. Wow, they look very brown. Oh, that's because they're orange cakes, right? Or yeah. It... Well, and that's just the top. I'm gonna. I'm giving it a little toothpick test here to be sure. So, toothpick in the center comes, comes out clean. That means so they're right. done. Another good way. You can see how the cake is separated from the side of the cake pan. Yeah, that's that's another telltale sign. Or the touch test. See how it springs back like a spun. You yeah. know, just. Then you, that, that's another it has a little sign. bounce. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take our two eight-inch layers out. We're going to let them cool here. Um, I'm going to let them cool in the pan for oh maybe about five minutes or so. Then we'll flip them out, get them out of the pan, and let them fully cool. So in the meantime, you'll work on the dressing. I mean the uh, frosting. The frosting. <laughs> Yeah, I will. I'll. You know what? As soon as uh, we get these out of the uh, pans, I'll start on the uh, frosting, uh, which I'm going to make in a double boiler. Okay. So double boiler is basically, I've got a pan here of water. I'll turn the heat on, bring that up to a simmer, and then I'm going to put another bowl over the simmering water. So this is a sort of an indirect moist heat. Okay. They actually make double boilers, which are two-piece uh, kind of pots, one that fits over the other. I have one somewhere. I cannot find it. I, <laughs> but you know what? This works beautifully just as well, too. You can do a setup like this, okay? You can make your own double boiler. Improvise. So that's how we're going to actually cook the frosting, okay? Ralph, I found the recipe. Here it is, Betty Crocker's Color Vision Cake. That is what we're making right here. Again, 1952. Wow. Okay. So isn't that fun? fun? So you can go back in time through food. That's wonderful. 
We'll be back and we'll get started on our frosting. We ready for the frosting? We are ready for the frosting. So I've got my pot of simmering water here. See, Ralph, I don't know if you can. Yep, it's okay. got a low boil going. And then we're going to put our bowl there. Okay, here's going to be our frosting. I've got a quarter cup of egg white. Egg okay. White. Okay. So that was actually two, two large egg whites, whites from two large eggs. And I put in a cup of sugar, okay? Okay. Then we're also going to put in the rest of our, whatever was left in the packet. Remember, we used three tablespoons in the cake mix of the jello Orange mix. gelatin. Gel yes. Okay, gelatin. And we're, so whatever was left in the package. Then I'm going to put in an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. That's to help with the egg whites, to help get them stiff. Now... Here we go. So all this action is happening on the top part of this improvised double boiler. Right. I'm going to add that. Now the only mm -hmm. other thing I need to do, we've got that stirred in, is let me add some water. Warm water? Uh, room temp. And I need to check my recipe. I think it's a cup of, no, it's a quarter cup of water. Okay. Drop. So we're going to add one quarter cup of water to our mix here. There we go. And essentially what's going to happen is this is going to get cooked, okay, over the heat. Okay. So. Are you turning the heat up on it then? Well, I'm just keeping I'm keeping the heat on medium. I want to keep that simmer. And we are just going to keep beating and beating and beating. I'm going to be here for a while. I'll tell you. Look how orange that dressing right. is. Okay? But we want to beat this until it... Um, well, it'll start cooking, but we want stiff peaks. Okay? So we want, when we remove the... the uh, beaters from the frosting, the peaks to stay right stiff, so um, you can see it actually starting to even thicken up even now, but you know what, we'll come back in probably about five or six minutes when this is almost done, okay? Okay, we're getting there, so I've been at this now five minutes. You see how it, it's really thickening up? Yeah. Again, we're not at we're not at stiff peaks no. yet. It's still too soft to put a, on a, on the top of the cake. Yes, but this is going to be almost marshmallowy Ooh. in terms of its texture when we're done. Okay. Right, we'll be right back. So a few more minutes. Oh, look at it now. I can't. Your big hands in the way. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Look at that stiff peak. You so see? That's what you see when you pull it up. See yeah. how it stands up now. That's I'm when you know it's to, ready. Right. I'm going to take that off the heat and like so. Here we go. I'm going to move it over to the counter and I'm going to just give it one more little zhuzh. People who pay attention to these things will know this mixer is different because do you know my old Sears mixer pumped out, pumped out halfway through this little process here. Okay, now I've got some pineapple left over from uh, a ham that we did. This was chunk pineapple, and what I've done is I've crushed it and drained it. Very and drained important, it. It's very, very important, wet, right? Very watery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Fold. This is optional. If you don't like pineapple and you just want it orange, do it. Well, I'm going to fold in. Just so you do that by hand with the spoon. Yes. Not with the mixer. Not with the mixer. I'm going to fold this pineapple in to our icing. Now the icing is hot because we've cooked it. Oh, right. Okay. So, uh, so it needs to cool before right. I frost okay. the cake with it. Um, right. And our our layers are almost cool enough, so it should time out. We're going to let the frosting cool down for, oh, maybe about 15 minutes. So, all right, okay. our frosting is cooled down a little bit. Okay, it's still warm, but it's not hot. Um, 
we've got our two layers of cake pull down and I got my plate here that I'm gonna do cake plate um here's a little thing I put a little bit of frosting right in the middle what kind of voodoo is that <laughs> well here's why because that's gonna be the glue oh. <laughs> when it cools it'll help oh, fun. kind of okay hold that in place okay now something else that I have found and I think we've done this on other Video oh yes, this little trick. This, I I wedge a little bit of uh, wax, wax paper, paper or parchment paper. Yeah, something. So that when you're that frosting the cake, you can be a little messy and then pull that away. Yeah, because invariably, you know, it's this frosting. It's hard to um, not get some on the, the cake plate, and then you don't have to worry about trying to wipe it off right. afterwards. That's a cool trick. Okay, so we'll just do, just slip it under just like that. Okay, so we've got a layer cake. So let me get uh, some of this frosting here that we're going to include in our center layer. I love the little chunks of pineapple. I'm just going to spread that. I have a feeling this cake is going to be a hit. Well, I hope they like it. Okay. Because we have some friends um, that can't eat chocolate or nuts. Right. They which have a are lot of allergies. Very common in a lot of cakes, um, you know, certain cakes. So this is. This cake will be yeah. a safe cake. Safe cake. Okay. So there's our middle frosting. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is when I do a layer cake, I like to sort of yeah. invert the um, the uh, layers of right. the cake, and yeah. Okay. I need everything pushed down because it's hard for me to get a shot. Oh, I'm sorry. Of okay. all the action, yeah. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip this layer over like so, so that you can see these kind of take on the shape of the cake pan, so they kind of uh, recede on one side so what I'm you actually end up with is almost like an hourglass shape so the bottom I put the wider side of the cake on as my bottom and then the I do the reverse for the top so that it kind of goes yeah. in but otherwise we're gonna fill this in right. with frosting and if you didn't do it like that it would be uh, you'd have kind of a sunken looking cake so yeah so I like to do it like that <laughs> so now what I'm going to do now, Ralph, I don't know where you're going to have... It's like a big orange cookie. You might have to get on the other side because now I'm going to work on the sides of the cake here. And I'm using a... Just using a big spatula here. And I'm going to just go around... This looks like a fun part. ...here and get all of the cake covered and pull it up to the top. So, I'm going to keep, keep spinning it a bit. And now, I wish I had one of, one of these days I'm going to get, I think I got one up north at the cottage, a lazy Susan kind of a thing. So, I don't have to keep turning the actual plate. Oh, but I have a deluxe Scrabble game in my trunk of my car. Yeah, could well, we could just <coughs> use that. So, like a lot of things, cake decorating, it has never been my strong suit i love to make cakes frosting them uh you don't get too worried you know, about it i don't get too worried exactly we know when you get this cake you know it's it was homemade it wasn't done at a bakery but uh, so one of these when, days i'm going to learn some other techniques when they were um teaching you that in home ec were you out smoking a cigarette <laughs> yeah i must have been absent that day okay so I'll come back and redo the sides, refine them a little bit. Let me get, let's get our top done here first. So do you find this frosting to be uh, stickier than the creamier cheese cream, cream well, cheese frosting? Well, it's not as, when it cools down, it stiffens up okay. even more. So that's the other thing. You don't want this to get too cool, otherwise it becomes too hard to work with, wow. right? 
So it has to be at the right consistency. Yeah, it's still on the warm side. Plus, it has those chunks of pineapple in it, so it's never going to be completely smooth. Smooth, but you just want to give it a, a you know a little bit of a finished look. So, do you want to keep going, or do you want me to come back? Well, you know what? I'm gonna. Okay, so now I've, the cake is covered. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try to put some finishing touches on it here, and then we'll so we're all frosted. I'm going to take off our little protectors here. Yeah, we'll just kind of slide that right out there. See? See how it kept the edge of the cake plate so nice? Yes. And I'm going to put a couple more little swirls in here. But what do you think? I think uh, it looks delicious. I can't wait to try it. I think it's going to be a big hit. It'll like be I fun. Said. Like I said, I'm going to put it in uh, the fridge. Now, we'll move it here. But, anyways, there it is, folks. This is our Betty Crocker 1952 color version, color vision. Our version of a color vision. <laughs> yeah, our version <laughs> of the color vision cake, um, orange pineapple. So, you know what? We had a blast putting this cake together. I know we're going to have, have a blast a lot of fun eating, eating it, it um, at the party tonight. I hope everybody enjoys. And again, you know what? It's fun to go back in time and try some vintage recipes because a lot of those old recipes, frankly, are some of the best. Um, and it's certainly a unique cake. Um, and I think you would bring this to any party and people would really say, wow, that's cool. So, anyways, thank you for being a part of this one, and you know what? We'll see you next time on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye.